in Canada, what's, what was evident to us was the gap between the anxiety that comes through in the polling and the um, excitement and attraction and support for deepening interaction and exchange with China that you find in the business and academic uh, communities. And so this implies to us that leaders have a, intellectual leaders, political leaders, have a responsibility in Canada to lead uh, and educate and, and change uh, the narrative. <laughs> What's also instructive, again looking at Australia, is that since 1989, Australian Prime Ministers have commissioned two white papers, one in 1989 and one about three years ago. Um, in which they've looked at and used these papers to educate Australians about how their future uh, lies uh, in Asia. So our view is that Canada needs a similar high-level leadership around a fresh narrative uh, and one that can very strongly uh, be shaped by common interests. And this is coming out, some of you, many of you have probably seen the hype in, the, in newspapers in the last few days about the possibility that the Trudeau government is going to launch uh, a free trade uh, agreement negotiation with the Chinese. I think that's all rumor, um, but it's certainly consistent with what I think we should do. Um, why? Well, because there's remarkable economic complementarities uh, which provide, have provided uh, a, a foundation for collaboration. Um, and yet many Canadians are not aware that China is our second largest trading partner after the United States. And what's amazing is that 65% of our total trade is with the United States, 7% of our total trade is with China. And so there's a, a big, and in the paper which you can download, uh, there's uh, e evidence uh, of the trends through time and how um, uh, prominent China is among the Asian uh, partners. Um, the other thing is that we have, so complementarity again, China seeks security of supply in energy, agriculture, um, and natural resources, even water. And Canada seeks security of demand, particularly in energy with uh, what's the fracking revolution in the United States, which has made them much more uh, independent of our markets. And so, um, as an Asia Pacific Foundation task force noted in 2012, there's all sorts of innovation across Canada uh, to draw on um, that relates to greater efficiency in, in water use uh, that's happening in Alberta and innovations in various parts of the country relating to uh, que clean energy. You know, overall, we're China's 18th largest supplier. And in contrast, again, I'll use Australia, they're the sixth largest. Uh, supplier uh, to China. So our challenge is to realize more of the potential of both our resources and our expertise and energy is a potential game changer not just because of uh, fossil fuels uh, but because of the green, uh, the emphasis on green uh, innovation that um, the leadership in China is uh, uh, putting forward right now.